When I meet folks from around the world, their first impression of the United States is that it's a young country with a brief history. But that couldn't be further from the truth. While the United States today is certainly governed largely by European immigrants and their descendants, ultimately, we may never know what happened to the Hopewell tradition. What we do know, however, is that they were an incredible culture that produced a strong trade network without any writing system, without any major warfare, and perhaps even without large-scale agriculture, laid low by changes in politics, urbanization, and climate. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more anthropological videos. Also, let me know what you think happened to the Hopewell in the comments below. First of all, Hopewell is not what these people would have called themselves, as the name comes from the Hopewell Mounds located in Ross County, Ohio, on the property of Mordecai Hopewell, hence the name. There were a few theories as to where these Riverside Mound Builders came from, with one theory pointing to western New York and another western Illinois. What's most likely is that these were people already in the area and that those of Illinois began constructing mounds and to inspire nearby settlements' populations to do the same, leading to a domino effect of mound-building fun. One likely origin based on perceived social stratification is from Adena, an earlier mound-builder site that seems to share an almost identical social hierarchy structure as that of the Hopewell tradition. Elite residents of cities would be buried under earthen mounds, while the vast majority of residents were cremated. Settlements had leaders, but there is no evidence that they had any power over warriors or slaves, so they were likely what anthropologists refer to as big men, meaning they were individuals with power only loosely granted to them by their community, who could lose their power to rule as easily as they gained it. Speaking of mounds, the residents of Hopewell Tradition settlements didn't just construct burial mounds. They also built elaborate effigy mounds in the shapes of animals like birds and serpents. Make it pretty. Thank you. Put, Put a, a bird, bird on it. One archaeologist, Dr. Bradley T. Lepper, even believes one mound in Newark, Ohio, may have been an ancient lunar observatory. Most of the mounds, however, seem to be burial mounds, as many of them contain not only human remains, but also grave goods made of expensive items like copper, mica, and obsidian. Some of these artifacts included hand-shaped mica pieces, pipes in the shapes of animals, animal effigies made of copper, and ceramic pieces with designs depicting birds. Other pieces of artwork found in archaeological digs included grizzly bear teeth, freshwater pearls, seashells, shark teeth, and small pieces of silver likely used for jewelry. Some artwork was even made from human bone, including a mask made from a human skull. Clearly these guys were into the spooky stuff. While the culture of the Hopewell tradition was relatively unison, the tradition was far from being a unified nation-state. Instead, it consisted of several communities connected almost exclusively by trade. These included the Crab Orchard culture of southern Illinois, the Miller culture of northern Mississippi, and the Ohio Hopewell culture of... well... Ohio. Different settlements in the network ranged from Ontario to Louisiana and from Kansas to New York, and all of these communities traded with cultures as far west as the Rocky Mountains and as far east as the Atlantic coast. At about the same time as the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Hopewell tradition had disappeared. Because there is no known written record from the era in that part of the world, Archaeologists and historians can only speculate over what happened. Some theories suggest war, pointing to the creation of fortified settlements in the area approaching the 6th century CE. Others point to a combination of technology and weather, citing the increased frequency in use of the bow and arrow 
paired with a climate shift that would have combined to cause havoc on local herds of wild game. A third suggestion even points to the increased use of agriculture as a means of settlements becoming increasingly independent, severing ties with the trade network and resorting to warfare to protect people and goods in increasingly large settlements. What we do know is that corn or maize was not a large part of Hopewell residents' diets. But, to be fair, most residents were cremated. Royal Hopewell families may have attempted to maintain increasingly expensive diets based on dying wild foods that put them in conflict with their increasingly agricultural subjects. It is said that the people are revolting. You said it. They stink on ice. Ultimately, we may never know what happened to the Hopewell tradition. What we do know, however, is that they were an incredible culture that produced a strong trade network without any writing system, without any major warfare, and perhaps even without large-scale agriculture, laid low by changes in politics, urbanization, and climate. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more anthropological videos. Also, let me know what you think happened to the Hopewell in the comments below. Civilizations have risen and fallen throughout, oh man, I'm struggling.